Hi guys, Mike Rue here. This is the Ultimate Hardcore Iron Man episode number 10. We're actually doing some PVM in this episode alongside some invention games, so let's get right into it. Starting this episode where we left off, camping in the abyss with 75 magic so we could test out that new staff. The staff from the quest point reward is tier 75 and it should do very well. Let's go test it. Time for me to reclaim my weapon. It costs 500k to reclaim. Man, that's expensive. But now we've got it, we never have to worry about getting it back. We're going to drop our graphic staff. We haven't learned how to use the spec anyway, so it's just taking up inventory space. Now we're going to switch the style to magic and we can wear the staff. We still have 37 minutes of our Vampora, so let's go test this staff out. I was minding my own business in the abyss and someone came up to my spot. Obviously, I'm slightly to the side of the spot, but you get people like this everywhere, right? You ask them to hop, they say no, and you're like, well then, okay. To be honest, I don't lose out on much XP when people crash me. What I do is I wait until I have no aggro left, and I don't reset my aggro, I just stand underneath the person. They take all the damage, and I just AoE underneath of them everything. I use chain, I use dragon breath, I use detonate, all of that, so I can tag the monsters so I get XP. I'm currently getting 200k experience an hour with this new weapon, and it's really good. If I fight back, then maybe they'll crash less in the future and it wastes their time. And maybe they'll think again about crashing just because of that. Hey, he hopped. That's what we needed. Although I've got food like right now anyway, so I can't really use the last 20 minutes of my aura. But I thought that was uh, a win in my book. He came. I asked him to hop. He said no. I ruined his XP rates. And my XP rates were only like 50k less. So that's okay. And uh, yeah, I guess hopefully this guy won't crash as many people in the future because he's wasting his time. We also got 62 defense. I'm going to go eat and stuff. And then we're going to actually go do some bossing. We got a KBD Reaper that we got last episode. And then we're going to get a new Reaper. And I also really want a Dragon Hatchet. So we'll do some Dagonoff Kings as well. I got a KBD Reaper. So I went to the Champions Guild. Bought a Mystic Wand to try and do KBD. The other thing that I needed obviously was an Anti-Dragon Shield. So I went to the Duke in Lumbridge. Got the Anti-Dragon Shield and went to try and solo it. A tier 50 weapon probably isn't the best idea to solo KBD with. Um, it didn't go very well. I took so much damage and I dealt like nothing. Half of my damage was dealt with goddamn reflect. I was just splashing 24-7 or hitting like 200 to 400. Wasn't really viable for me to solo King Black Dragon, so I asked a couple of people for help and I got one or two Iron Men friends to come help me out with my Reaper and it won't take me 10 years. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fresh and uh, Mr. J-Rod for the help. What are we going to get? We're level 33, Sire. We're now 36, Sire. Easy gains, dude. And we got some Reaper points. Lovely. I'm going to go get another Reaper. I might be able to get KBD again. Let's go see. 26 Dag Kings. That's perfect. That is that is great. I'm happy. Doing Dagonoff Kings is not too bad because you can save spot Rex over and over and over again. You just need to make sure you don't aggro the others. So as soon as you enter the instance, run far east. That way, when they spawn, nothing will hit you. Then you can aggro Rex and get going that way. Best way to aggro Rex is to stand exactly where I am. No further, no less. And every time he spawns, he should run directly towards you. If you run too far out, you will aggro other ones and it's not good. So just make sure you're standing in this exact spot. This spot is on the southeast. So now you can see Rex has spawned, he's followed me, I attack him a bit and then I run up to the north safe spot because I find it's the easiest one to do, it's very consistent. Then you can DPS Rex down with no worries, make sure you don't stand too far out as well, always stand as far east as you can behind this safe spot so you don't aggro anything either. Then when you loot Rex, his loot will be in a safe spot so you can stand directly on top of his loot and you know you're not going to aggro anything. This is how I do Dagonoff Kings. Now we got the hang of things, this shouldn't be too bad. We just need to make sure that we never get hit by one of these. So we got 63 defense and we got a Zerka Helm. I guess we'll uh, we'll just keep the Zerka Helm for another time, but it wasn't a Zerka ring, sadly. And we got a level in prayer and we got 53. We're still going to smash sometimes, but the fire spells should make us like, what, 90% hit rate or something, hopefully, which means we'll get it done even quicker, which is nice. There's our Reaper task done and we got 10,000 Slayer HP, went from 36 to 39. And 12 Reaper points, that's not even that bad, dude. I'm happy with that. And we just got a Fremenic Helm, which outs for 3.9k, feels good. There's 64 defense and uh, we are still waiting on that good old uh, Dragon Hatchet. 
We got a DK's teleport. We can get back here so easily. I love it. Great. Happy. So we got a Warrior's Ring, no Zerk Ring though. Zerka Ring is the one we want. So Warrior's Ring is okay. Zerka's Ring is the one we want to aim for. I probably will out there if we get a Zerka's Ring. And we also need the Hatchet still. And we currently have 89 kills. So uh, we're not, we're not, uh, I guess we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Okay then, we got 67 defense and a Zerka Ring. There we go. That Zerka Ring is actually useful. 12 in all stats, I'll take it. All right, I'm happy, but now we just need the Dragon Hatchet. Give me the Dragon Hatchet, I've had both rings. Give me the Hatchet. I'm gonna out the Warrior's Ring for 6k because we've got the Zerka Ring. We'll never use that Warrior's Ring, especially when we can't store it in the bank. If we could store it in the bank, I'd store it there, but we can't, so eh. If we can get a Dagonoff task, I'll be so happy. So we can use our daily teleport to go to the Cosmic Rune Altar, which takes us into Xanaris. We can go to the Slayer Master in Xanaris, and hopefully, hopefully, she will give us Dagonoffs. We are only 39 Slayer, so it would be so nice. Let's give it a try. Hey, Sheldar, give me a task. Lesser demons. Lesser demons. I guess it's back to the Dagonoff Kings with no Slayer task, sadly, but uh, hopefully we can get our hatchet. We've had both of the rings off of Rex, so hopefully our hatchet is coming. We have nearly 100 KC, so hopefully, hopefully. Hey guys, how to kill the Dagonoff Kings 101. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I will leave now. It, it didn't beam, but we got it. It didn't beam, but we got the Dragon Hatchet. We're done. We got it done, boys and girls. All right, that took 119 kills. That wasn't even bad. We got all of the rings. We got the Warrior's Ring, the Zerka Ring, and the Hatchet in 119 kills. That's that's some good RNG. All right, let's go. Let's leave. So hopefully this gives us some powerful components. Give us some powerful components, please. Also got us a summoning level, so that's nice. Disassemble these and give us some components. Please, game. Just, just a couple of powerful. That's all I'm asking for. There's one powerful. Okay. Give me your insulated boots. Ten of them. Let's go. Give us a powerful, please. Evasive. Wrong one. <laughs> okay, never mind. There's our second powerful component. We're nearly there. So we need seven powerful, and I think we have five now. We have five powerful, so we need two more. This shop is surprisingly good. Very cheap, very good for components. And that's Zaf's shop with all of the magic armor. They give a lot of different stuff, though. Not too many junk. And the thing is, like, base parts, deflecting parts and stuff, they're still useful. I'm still getting useful commons, so I'm okay disassembling this stuff. Because the useful commons I can actually use in, like, later on stuff. So I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Just need to get the powerful components and, and we can move on. Out of everything so far, the Batwing Boots has given us the powerful components. That's good. Spider Silk robe top gave us our last powerful component that we needed for seven for our augmenter which means i think we have every single component now but we do need to go get some energy so let's go get our energy this is satisfying my first ever augmenter on the no bankaroo i'm happy right i know it's gonna permanently take up an inventory space but the plan from here on out is make a ton of siphons siphon this constantly at level 10 and get to level 60 just by siphoning this and getting like nine 99 woodcutting or something because I would need 60 for the invention machines so I can store my divine charges so I can store some of these items in like alcas or something and they can sit there with no alc runes in there and they will be banked essentially like a looting bag on old school if you will and then I can go do bossing effectively without having to be limited to like 15 goddamn inventory slots so uh that is the plan we're augmenting this bad boy now we gotta make some good siphony boys and the Siphony Boys, I can't even make yet. What level are they? Siphony Boys are level 27, which means we can get all of the materials for a lot of them, disassembling stuff for the last level and a bit to get to 27. That should be okay. We need five Precious, five Dexterous, and 50 Simple Parts per Siphon. Simple Parts can be done just by doing Acadias, like we did for the charges. Dexterous components can be gotten with like Maple Shield Bows Unstrung and stuff. Precious components can be done with Jewelry. So we just got all of that to do now. Great. They are pretty damn cheap. We can buy these short bows and shield bows and get dexterous, hopefully get some dexterous, or we just get a lot of flexible and tensile, which are needed anyway. So man, even a goddamn iron sword gave us a dexterous component. That's great. That makes me happy. They're just so expensive now. Doing shop runs on an iron man is like the quickest way to rinse your bank. I swear to God. Worth it though, because we got another dexterous component, so I'm happy. But Jesus. 
It was time to make jewelry, so I mined gold in the living rock caverns. It would give me 120 gold super easy because every time you mined through and you got a full progress bar, you got five gold ore. Did this for like nine inventories and got over a thousand ore. Then I had to go back to Varrock. I reclaimed my cooking gauntlets, right clicked, switched them into smelting gauntlets. This allows me to AFK gold. I would smelt gold 60 at a time and it instantly goes to the ore bank. That means I can just chill and it's so much easier, so much smoother to do. And the reason why I've got the gold bars, obviously, is to make jewelry. I will be using Shiloh Village Gem Rocks to get my gems for the jewelry and get loads of precious components, hopefully. Oh, that's hefty. I got two precious components from one of those disassembles. That is nice. I managed to use up like 600 gold bars and I made emerald, ruby and diamond bracelets here in Shiloh. Just mining the gem rocks in Shiloh and making them into bracelets. We are now comfortably sitting at 53 precious components. That means we need a lot more dextrous in order to make siphons, as a siphon is 5 precious, 5 dextrous. To get dexterous components, we can do a couple of shop runs. Then I'm probably just going to make loads and loads of you short bows unstrung or maple. We'll have to see. Ideally, I would want the white knight shop. But I can't get the white knight shop without the wanted quest, which requires recruitment drive. And recruitment drive requires me to bank absolutely everything. So it looks like I'll probably have to do that at 60 invention when I can actually use machines to store stuff. I don't fancy deleting 300 odd divine charges and dragon hatchet and stuff like that right now. So this is pretty interesting. Even though invention is my lowest skill, I'm guessing it is either because it's an elite skill or it goes by XP. That it doesn't give me XP in invention and it's given it in dungeoneering instead. It's probably something to do with going by XP or something like that. Which means I can still get some free dungeoneering XP from the Guffixion Butterflies, which is neat. I'm also going to get some Hunter XP soon when I hit level 30 dungeoneering. And uh, yeah, that should be pretty damn good. Let's catch some of these butterflies. Oh my god, that was three dungeoneering levels. That's absolutely insane. That is absolutely nutty. This green one should give us 32 Hunter as well. There we go, and we call everyone we can today. Lovely. I'm going to test chopping down yew trees, turning the yew logs into yew short bows, unstrung, and disassembling them to try and get dexterous components. No idea how effective this will be or whether it will just be better to do maples. But I need to do something that's fairly AFK and yew is definitely more AFK than maple. So I'm going to give these a try, see how many components I can get. To be fair, they're not the best. They do take quite a long while to get all the yew logs and stuff and I feel like maple is still going to be better. You did get precise and dexterous fairly often, but maple are definitely going to be better. So I'm going to go do those behind the bank in Sears Village. I now have 34 dexterous and I want to take that up to 50 so I match my precious and I can make 10 siphons. That'll do me for a while. So I need to get another 16 and I'll do that with maple short bows unstrung and see how long that takes me. There we go, pausing the timer, 1 hour, 13 minutes and I got my 16 components to take it to 50. We are 2000 XP away from 27 invention, which means we need a tiny bit more invention XP from disassembling some things. So we can go disassemble another shop run and that should get us it. There is our 27 invention, we managed to get it. Let's go get our siphons and get 10 made ready for our XP gains. We'll probably AFK Ivy while doing stuff on our main while getting invention gains with woodcutting. I now have 10 equipment siphons to make, which is going to be a lot of woodcutting XP. Probably going to AFK Ivy until I can do overgrown idols. Then I'll do overgrown idols until I can do crystal trees. And I'll just do the AFK method to get my invention up while doing stuff on my main and things like that. I'm really enjoying this account and it's going pretty damn well. I just need to get those machines so I can store stuff in it. So if I die, I don't just lose everything. First ever siphon on the Ultima Hard Cry Man. What level is he going to get us to? 32. Very nice. Now back to a choppy choppy AFK. Time to catch these butterflies. They are so OP, man. They give you so much XP in your lowest stat. It's nuts. And I just need to make sure that I can get the white one for extra XP into Dungeoneering and do this every day and get some free Dungeoneering XP. Then when I get a high enough Dungeoneering level, I can go to loads of Dungeoneering resource dungeons, get even more Dungeoneering XP, and it should be very good. There we go. There is 35 Dungeoneering already. Nice. 
Let's grab this white one. Should go into Dungeoneering because it is our lowest skill, I believe. There we go, 37 Dungeoneering. That was two levels. It's so dumb. That is it for this episode. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy it. My stats are on screen now. Nearly 1,600 total. We have our invention unlocked. We're level 32 now. Things are looking up. Things are going well. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do those butterflies to try and get 50 Dungeoneering. Or we'll get close to 50 Dungeoneering. Then we can use resource dungeons, jack of trades and stuff to push it to 50. Then we can do shifting tombs. Shifting Tombs is going to be really good for Dungeoneering, Agility, and Prayer XP for Prif. So my two big goals are probably getting the stats for Prif. Shifting Tombs will be a big part of that. And getting 60 Invention for the Machines. Next episode, hopefully we'll do some Shifting Tombs and we'll have to see. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. And until next time, see ya.